Hey there, I'm Damon Wood. I was guitarist with James Brown, the Godfather of Soul, for eight years from 1998 to 2006. And I've got a lesson for you today on the 50 most crucial movable guitar chord shapes for funk, blues, and jazz. Okay, so this lesson is mostly going to focus on the A note here and the D note here. Those are going to be the two base points that we use to do all these different chords. We're going to do a couple things in E as well. Okay, starting out, we're going to look at this big A major chord. This is the fifth fret. So not only do you have this major chord here, but you also have what's called the top of that major chord. We'll get back to that in a second. So you got your big major chord here. Sometimes you can play it without that bass note. Here's the full one, and here's what's called the top. Okay, then we're going to come down here to D. This is D major. And a lot of times people would play, you could play the top like that, or you could play it like this. A lot of people will play it, these second, third, and fourth strings right here. And here's an example of like a Stir It Up by Bob Marley. So we've also, while well, we've got the major here, we've also of course got your minor. We've got the, we go down to D, we've got the D minor. You could look at tops of those as well. Then we've got the dominant 7 in this area. So this would be, there's your A dominant 7, here's your D dominant 7. Here's a couple more uh, inversions you could do. You could put your pinky here on the second string. That's another different sounding A7. D7 could also be played like this, where you bar those 7s and get an 8 on the bottom. Okay, so that's your A and A minor, A7, and D, D minor, D7. Okay, next we're going to talk about the A7 and the different variations we can do here. So there's your full A7. Now, a lot of times you can, to get a more jazzy type sound, you can take the 5 out of here, which would be, you know, that, that would make the power chord if we want that. We take that out, we end up with this. Got a different ring to it, it's a little more jazzy, it's less earthy, it doesn't have that grounding kind of like fifth note in it. Okay, then there's another one where you can play the play the three here in the low end. So that's like five, four, five, six would be another A7. Now we've got the seven nine. This is like the James Brown type funk chord if you were if your bass note was on this big string. So that's going to be 5th fret, and then nothing on the A string, 5, 4, 5. Okay, so that's the dominant 7, 9 chord there. Now if you wanted to raise 9, you could go 5, 4, 5, 5. That's used more, I would say, on the, the A string bass note. We'll get to that in a second. Another one you can do is the dominant 7, 13. So it's kind of a reversal of what would be your normal major notes there with the fret numbers. An example of that might be uh, like in higher ground than the, the kind of chorus part. Kind of A7 to E7. I'll check out if I put this 13 on it. So a cooler, kind of jazzier kind of sound there. We're going to move down to the D7 here. <clears throat> We've got this D7 that we talked about, 5th fret, 5, 7, 5, 7, 5. We've also got the C7 shape, which comes from like the C7 chord down here. But we're going to have it on the 5th fret bass, 5, 4, 5, 3. That's your D7 right there. Now, kind of from that D7, we get into this D7, 9 which is extended down here. You take this ring finger and get these bottom three. Now you got the real official James Brown chord. So I played with James Brown for a long time and this D7-9 chord was like the center of our universe. So From there you've got other things. You've got the raise nine. So you got five, four, five, six. And that gives you more of a minor sound. Seven. I mean seven, nine and raise nine. Then the next one, 
my first night with James Brown, he kept coming up to me and saying, do this, play that, play that. I didn't know what he meant. He meant 13 chord. That means you put your pinky down here on the bottom string and you get something like Sex Machine. And then we also have, we have this raised nine we're talking about. There's another jazz chord that comes in sometimes, which is a flat nine. So that'd be five, four, five, four. So you gotta get a bar going over here. A lot of times you'd hear that as kind of a five chord change to go back to a one, like. And then we build G major seven right here. Now here's another one we've got. Um, this is one from like super bad where it looks like this D7 sharp nine, but you're really not playing that major third right there. You're kind of just playing these other notes. So you could look at it as a D minor seven of sorts as well, kind of with no five in it, but that'd be like a. That's another thing to think about when you're playing some of these chords is sometimes you can have the chord and the bass note kind of operating as two different things to get some funky syncopation. Okay, now we're gonna move back up to the fifth string up here. We're gonna look at the A major seven. So here's the A major seven. Fifth fret, nothing on the A string, six, six, five. Another way to do that would be to take your thumb here and come down here. And this is kind of like a C sharp minor shape down on the bottom, but we're gonna have that A in it and not play the A string. You could play the A string too. So that's a major seven for A. Here's another one. Seven, six, five, four. If you didn't need to really play the bass note so much, of course you could play that bass note with it too. But this is a movable short shape that you'll see a lot. So okay, then we're gonna go to the minor seven. So that just has the five and the seven here and barring all the fives, A minor seven. You could also put your pinky in here, second string, get a different inversion. Okay, now uh, for jazz, a lot of times you'll play, you won't play the five in there. Like I said, that five makes things more earthy sounding and it's more jazzy and spacious to not have that done in there. You hear the different chord tones kind of pop out a little bit more on the higher end there. So that'd be an A minor seven. I got middle finger here and I'm doing that same thing we did with the 7 9 chord when we played it down here We're doing that up here on the second third and fourth strings okay then the next one is a minor 9 so we have our minor 7 if we put a pinky down here in the bottom we have a minor 9 you could also look at that as a top of a chord by going 7 5 5 7 a minor 9 top. Okay, now how about an augmented chord? 5, skip the A, 5, 6, 6. And then we've got a diminished chord. Also known as this one, 4, 5, 4, 5. But we could do it with this bass up here as a 5, and then skip the A string and go 4, 5, 4. That's a diminished chord. Now, if you wanted a half diminished chord, minor seven flat five, you got five, skip the A, five, five, and four. Now, here is one of uh, the major six, nine chord. This would be if you got your, your five up here, then you go four, 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 and two fives at the bottom. Kind of a pretty chord for the end of like a jazz, pretty jazz tune. Okay, now we're going to move down to the D note again. Here we're on the D note again. We've got 5th fret. We're doing a D major 7, 5, 7, 6, 7, 5. You could also flip this around and use the bass note with your pinky. 5, 4, 2, 2, 2. Has a nice ring to it, different inversion. Okay, then we're going to look at the minor 7. Here's your minor. Take the pinky out, and you got your minor 7. Now, um, we can also do this minor 7 without the 5 and get that more jazzy, more spacious sound. Here's kind of the difference. Like, I look at it as like, um, I'm going to move it to the 7th fret for this example. It's like Steely Dan Josie. Versatile. 
verse is like long training running by the Eagles. A lot more grounded sounding with that five in it from kind of that power chord. So once again, a lot more spacious with that chord. So a lot of times you'll see that minor seven without the five, go back to the fifth fret here. So with five, without five. Okay, then let's look at a minor nine for that D. So where this was your nine chord, this is your minor nine. Five, three, five, five. You could also kind of bar that down. So that's a minor nine. Augmented is next. Five, four, three, three. So that's the kind of thing you'd hear on like the beginning of Ophelia by the band, like. Or say, uh, Oh Darling by the Beatles. And that's usually like in a five chord position. Augmented chord. All right, then we've got diminished. Five, six, four, six. That's a diminished chord. Up here it was, and down here it could be. Okay, so that's diminished, half diminished. Look like that here. Five six five six. Uh, one example of that is the Ween song "Chocolate Town." We'll start in the A major. So it's half diminished or minor seven flat five. All right, here goes the six nine chord, major six nine chord for this string. We're gonna go back to the fifth fret here. Sorry. Okay, so that's five, four, four, five, five. It's major six nine. Now if we move this minor note here, now we got five, three, four, five, five. That's a minor six nine. Okay, then we're gonna move on to the last few chords. Just to get us over 50, uh, I kind of cheated and I'm going up here using the E a little bit. Now let's look at the E. We got the seventh fret here. Let's look at our E seven nine our E raise nine, sharp nine. You got like your purple haze thing there. Fox Lady kind of thing. Okay, a couple others we can do is raise nine. Of course we can always use that bass there since we're in E here on seven. Raise nine to flat nine. We also have this 13 like the sex machine. Okay, that's been the 50 most crucial movable guitar chord shapes for funk, blues, and jazz. Thanks a lot. I'm Damon Wood. If you like this, please like and subscribe for plenty more. Appreciate you.